Sound the trumpet again. Hardly anyone is answering the call to worship. Most of the people are upon Mount Olivet, following Jesus into the city. You heard me ask the people who that man Jesus is, and you heard their voices relating answers given by prophets of old. Somehow we have to stop all this before the people place Jesus upon the throne of David. Well, we've been saying this for a long time, but we haven't done anything. We have tried. With absolutely no effect. The people won't even listen to us anymore. But they would listen to the temple police. If only we could get them to do something. Oh, well, perhaps they will. Come, let us find the ranking officer. Greetings, sir, from the elders, priests, and rulers of Jerusalem. Greetings. You are the ranking officer of the temple police? I am. What can I do for you? The people. They're making a lot of noise. They seem to love the man riding the young colt. They do. In fact, he is leading them in rebellion against Israel and Rome. He is about to take possession of the temple and crown himself king of Judea. We can't do that. He will, unless you and your men stop him. We will. Detail, fall in behind me, and we'll stop this immediately. temple service and establish thyself upon the throne of David. I am not come to establish an earthly kingdom, but to save the lost sheep into an everlasting kingdom. Soon I shall ascend to my father, and mine accusers shall see me no more until I shall come again in glory. Then, too late for salvation, shall all people acknowledge me and bow down and worship me. Never man spake is he. In his calm, solemn face I see love, benevolence, quiet dignity. Ah, you elders and rulers, it's you who started this disturbance. I should arrest you, all of you. Detail, follow me. He blamed us. It is your fault. You insisted upon involving the temple police. Well, someone has to do something. We can't just stand here and let the people proclaim Jesus their king. Come, my disciples. We will steal away while the multitude are busy with their arguments. We shall visit the temple, then go to Bethany for the night. In the morning we shall come again to the temple. I see a fig orchard yonder, Master. But the time of the figs is not yet. But one tree already has leaves, many of them. Mm. Then it should have figs upon it, for the fruit appears before the full matured leaves. We shall go and eat of its fruits. Oh, uh, the tree is deceptive, Lord. From the lowest to the topmost branches there is nothing but leaves. No fruit it beareth. No man shall eat of the fruit of this tree hereafter forever. Let the others go ahead a little way, Peter. I wish to speak with thee. Now, John, my young friend, what is it I can do for thee? The master, cursing the fig tree is so unlike him. Often has he said that he came not to destroy, but to save. He restores, he never destroys. He loves, never condemns. He is the great healer, the savior. The act of cursing the fruitless fig tree stands alone in his long ministry. Why did he do it? What was his purpose? Well, it puzzles me too, John. We shall just have to wait. Someday we may know and understand. Again we passed the fig orchard, and that fig tree. Only yesterday morning it flourished with leaves, Peter. Now it is withered. Uh, I expected it. Thinking it over since yesterday morning, I think the master gave us a living parable. The barren tree is likened 
to those who profess and appear to have righteousness, but bear no fruit unto eternal life. Our own Israelite religion, with its magnificent temple, its sacred altars, its mitred priests and impressive ceremonies, is fair in outward appearance, but the fruits of the true worship, humility, love, benevolence, are lacking. Like the fig tree, no fruit shall it bear, and no man shall gain from it eternal life. Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursedst is already withered away. Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive.